Hi there, I just wanted to kind of <laughs> simplify things. Um, we've been talking about on the, on the forum about vacuum clamping and it's not very difficult. Uh, there have been good, some pictures of some great systems. I know Festool's coming out with one, but this works fine for me. It's This is just a little guest pump. Uh, draws 1.8 amps, so it's kind of energy efficient. It's small. Um, and it works fine. This is just a little filter in case you get dust or dirt in lines to protect it. And, sorry, I'm sh shooting by myself. Uh, and a little pressure gauge. It's a cheap one. You can get the glycerin filled ones that are a lot more accurate. Uh, the clamp is nothing more than a plastic board. Um, there's one hole in it. And I've routed out slots here for you to use the Festool clamps to clamp it down to the table and we'll do that in a minute but uh, the important part is the tape and it's a closed cell foam tape used designed for this it's an eighth of an inch thick by three eighths of an inch wide the fitting is a threaded fitting you buy the plastic, two of the plastics uh, a roll of tape, the fittings this hose and a foot switch, um, a latching foot switch for about $105 from Joe's, Joe Woodworkers, um, joewoodworker.com. And it's, it's pretty simple. Um, all the other ones, systems cost a lot more to do. And while we're sitting here, I'll go ahead and plug it in. That's my low-tech switch. And you can see it's not very noisy. And we're going to just put that, get it out of the way. And now we have a little clamp going here. And just to show you that it works and how quick it is, right now it's not pulling a vacuum. I'm going to hit the switch. This is just a piece of poplar that's been, just came from the big box stores. I've got one smoother side and one rougher side. We'll try the rougher side. You might be able to hear it. Uh, there. I, click the switch so you know it does indeed hold um, and now I'm gonna rather than waste your time I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off for a second and I'm gonna clamp it on the table and get an idea of how strong it is oh one thing I forgot the, the tape I reuse as long as you're butting it up close uh, and touching each other it works fine. Uh, my plate's pretty dirty right now, and you can clean that off easily. But, you know, kind of like chewing gum as a kid, you can kind of peel it off and stick it on something and reuse it. I'm running low on, on tape. But, you know, it's the strength that you're going to get clamping depends on this area in here and also the strength of the bond of the tape to the, to the plastic. So on a critical thing, I'd certainly suggest that you use new tape. All right, I'm going to pause this for a second, and then we're going to hook it up, and I'll hook it up a different way. All right, we're back, and right now it's the board is loose. Get the foot switch. Right, it's clamped. Oops. <laughs> so say I'm routing and maybe I've got the tubing turned around on the other side so it's not here I can easily reposition it route three sides release pressure come back and route the front edge uh, very simple self-explanatory uh, can you pop it loose absolutely uh, in fact, for more strength, of course, you can do two of these if your board's long enough. But for simple repetitious things, uh, it's just an extra pair of hands not having to adjust the clamp, even the Festool clamps. All right, I'm going to stop it one more time and give you a different idea of something, and then I'll go away. Okay, I'm back. 
this time we're going to get a little shaky because I'm doing it, and once again I'm by myself. But, in, and this is not the perfect example of this, oops, wrong way, uh, but if you were to go ahead and these plastic blocks really don't cost that much, about 12 bucks a piece or something, you could certainly make a special block for doing stuff on the front of your MFT. Uh, let me show you what I'm doing here. Okay, well, we're, we're solid. Click the switch. Well, there's my board. You could easily go ahead and make two of these and put one to the right and one to the left. You could certainly shorten uh, the top section of this block so it didn't interfere with what you were working on. But it is quicker and easier to position a piece of wood on the front of the MFT3 than it is use these clamps and that's all it takes. Now of course just in case you're thinking that I've got it sitting on the top of anything it's not and we're going to hit the switch and there we go. Anyway just thought <laughs> this might simplify things we can make things as complicated or as simple as we like like I said this system that I've got allows me to do this. This little block of wood can easily, plastic rather, can easily be used uh, to stick to a wall to hold up the end of a piece of mold. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I had a thought in the middle of the night and then looking through the first part of the video, a couple things I wanted to add. Connections. Uh, you can certainly use your brass connections, but if you want the most versatility, um, there are these little fittings called John Guest fittings. Um, they come from, you can actually get them at Lowe's or Home Depot, I believe. And what they allow you to do is make multiple configurations by just having a few of these and maybe a couple of T's. The tubing, whether it be the blue tubing, I'll use that because it shows off better, just pushes in. It's locked. It's locked. To disconnect, you just press and go. So if you've got a one clamp system and you want to go to a two clamp system, you can get these and T fittings and have a little stub line off of your other uh, plastic block, like so maybe, with uh, the ability to easily just have some loose tubing and connect it any way you want. And when you get done, if you don't need that second clamp, you can undo it and go back to having one. In the middle of the night, thinking about this, uh, I showed you on the front of the MFT that there were some uh, um, issues or that need to be addressed uh, on an individual basis regarding how do you attach it and your plastic being taller than your block. Well, anybody who has at least an MFT3 has one of these for the guide rails. Well, I can see that this little guy fits right in the slot. Easily, if you would either grind off, buy a second one, grind this off, you could easily mount your boards using screws from the back and then have the ability to move it up, down, and also side to side very easily. Now, if you want to go one step further, uh, as an idea, well, you know what? We all have one of these guys. And look, guys, it even pivots. I could easily see a spare one of these being bought just and drilling holes and mounting it to the back of a plastic block. That would work even better than the previous uh, approach. Probably a little bit more costly. And then you have the ability to flip it on the flat. If you want to work up here, flip it like this if you want to work on the front. Anyway, just a couple more ideas and that'll do it for today.